my gosh, you, you're freaking kidding me. Good fish. Oh, dude, moose, moose. All right, this is me. Oh my gosh. If you had the ability to fart on someone on demand, That's... I mean, why, why, <laughs> oh, why would... wouldn't you? I pretty much like all food. This is not necessary. Right? Baby, you're you're perfect. 25 years of marriage. <laughs> Lionel Richie was just on right. and she shot off Lionel Richie to film the fire. Right. We were easy like Sunday morning. Doesn't show up. And I are camping for the next few days, just getting away from work and enjoying ourselves in this fall weather. We're on Lake Michigan. It is so beautiful. We're in this big, thick, old pine forest. It's lovely. Don't wait for me, honey. Don't wait. We're here in the Vardo, and for me, having a fire, being in the Vardo, it's just magical. So, yeah. Come on, camp with us. are just magical. This is not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> but look at you. You're a lumberjack in the wild. Kind of kind of what every girl's dream. I don't feel like a lumberjack right now. Do you feel like you ate too much for breakfast? I feel like the omelet was too big. <laughs> right. Oh, it's so beautiful. back at the original campsite. Pulled the Vardo here. We're gonna camp in the OG. And I cannot believe it, but there is mosquitoes. It is, it is um, almost October. Like why, why are there mosquitoes at all? Opening this spot back up.
And it's cloudy. If it was to clear out, it'd be a chilly night. What is your version of the best campsite? Hmm. Campsites are like cheeseburgers. They're all good. Some are better than others, but they're all good. I can't think of a campsite I've ever been in where I was like, this, this is so horrific. I made coffee one time from rainwater off a tarp that me and a friend of mine bought because we lost our rain fly in the tent on a motorcycle trip and we were soaking wet and hypothermic and starving and uh, we still managed to have a good time and it wasn't even a campsite it was like we were on a two track in the middle of nowhere if you got a fire and you got food what would be your favorite campfire food I pretty much like all food. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to be 245 without having an affinity to food, right? Baby, you're you're perfect. I'm a lot of perfect. <laughs> I will say for the record though, I am I am six foot two. <laughs> so it's not like I'm five five, you know, it's two forty five. <laughs> okay, your story. It's a big difference. You, you know? know, you're always shorter fatter on camera <laughs> well you know if, if, if you're 245 and you're five foot five you can't hide it but when when you're my <laughs> height you can hide it it's fine it's not a big deal it's way which just goes to say it's it's way better to be a, a tall fat guy than a short fat guy <laughs> because it's easier to hide <laughs> like you take andre the giant andre the giant you know towards the end of his life you know he's obviously he's overweight but he's seven foot five. So, I mean, he can hide so much. You look at Andre, you're like, well, this, this guy's, you know, he could stand to drop a few pounds. But when you really get right to the nuts and bolts, he's 560 pounds, right? Yeah, but he had that disease where he actually kept no, growing. But if he was six foot tall and 560 pounds. Oh, yeah, yeah. He would literally look like, I don't know what he'd look like. There's nobody that's 5'5 five, five and 560 pounds. But he gets to be a giant. He was so cool. He was awesome. I loved Andre. He was so cool. And there's so many stories about Andre. You know, he was like strong as a farm animal type of thing. Mm -hmm. Just ridiculously. He was just, he was so much bigger than everybody else. He just had like a massive bone structure, had huge hands. And he was an interesting guy. Very. Yeah, he just had no mercy on cocky, you know, cocky wrestlers coming up. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. He just, he just, just terrorize him in the ring, grab him by the hair, yank him over the top ropes, sit on him and fart on him. And <laughs> he was Are hardcore. You just making that up? No, that's that's totally legit. <laughs> I mean. If you had the ability to fart on someone on demand, <laughs> I mean, why, why, <laughs> why wouldn't you, right? Why wouldn't you utilize that? <laughs> yeah, totally. Perfect campsite for me involves quiet. And even like last night where we were, we were so close to Lake Michigan and it was so loud. The wave and wind action was so loud. It, it unsettles me after a while. Does it do that to you? Yeah, it was really loud. I mean, it's like just you this... said, it was it was like camping by a waterfall. It was. It felt like we were camping by a waterfall, and I don't think I would dig that at all. There was a hill before you got to the lake, so we weren't we weren't getting the wind off of the lake. It was calm, but it was you nice. could hear the wind affecting. The oh lake. yeah, it sounded like a jet engine, man. It was so loud. On the other hand, it did drown out. <laughs> Snoring. Moose snores. Moose snores, and the wind action did help that. So there's that. I'm going to kick that dog. Him snoring, keeping you, know, you awake. You know, last night he didn't even move. He was so tired after playing with that. Yeah, other he found dog. himself a buddy and found a buddy, and he was so tired. He did, he did not move. I mean, I was just like, 
wedged on the edge because he was just like taking up the whole space. There were some folks in a couple campsites over had a big German Shepherd. Oh, and so that cool. German Shepherd moose just partied and they had a big, big wolf bash. <laughs> they did. It was so nice. They both went to sleep super tired. They said their puppy didn't move all night either. It's good for the doggos to have a buddy. I was tired too. I had crazy dreams all night long. So you know you sleep in at least... I mean, I was waking up realizing my crazy dreams, but... Yeah. It, I shut my eyes, and I opened it back up, and it was 6.45. You were asleep? Literally, as soon as your head hit the pillow. Yeah. I was. You were instantly out. Like yep. you, you lay down and you were asleep. Eleven o'clock ish. Yeah, it was like eleven thirty. Earliest I've been to bed in three weeks, probably. <laughs> that was nice talking. I, to I'm folks. never in bed at eleven o'clock ever, ever. Yeah. One o'clock, two o'clock, once in a blue moon, three o'clock. Not me. Darkness, I'm afraid I'm going to miss something, man. Darkness I, makes me go to sleep. I have a much harder time shutting off than I don't. anything else. I, I, I have a hard time, like, staying out of bed when it's daylight. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'll get up at 10 o'clock. Both the dogs will be in the room. You know, Daisy's sleeping on the floor. They don't. Moose is on the other side. They don't get up till you do, which is really funny. They're like, That you tells know, you something, don't it? I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> I'm going to hang out with my dad. Till... That tells you something. The dogs know what's up. They're like, hey, ain't no reason to get up. On the other hand, he's already in bed. Of course, he doesn't like the popping and the fire. But... The kids are out of school. Summer's pretty much over. There ain't no reason to just jump up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I can't help myself. I'm not up at five. That's for sure. Me neither. <laughs> I know, for sure you're not. Oh, but this place, I've never been somewhere where it is so utterly quiet. Our other UP property is the same way. Mm -hmm. Utterly, eerily quiet. There's no, Dead quiet. There's no birds, frogs, crickets. There's nothing happening. And then when something does happen, it really gets your attention. When I was building the cabin, this would be two years ago this year. Oh, my goodness. I would I would wrap up building the cabin, and I'd come back to this site. There was the, the bell tent. Yeah. And I'd have a fire, and I'd make something to eat. And usually by 10 o'clock, I was... I'd sit here and I'd watch the stars and stuff. You I know, would too, because the North Star comes right, and it's like right yeah. there. And it's just dead, dead quiet. Yeah. And when I'd lay down to go to sleep, I'd listen to the radio for a while. Because there's a I few know. stations here, you know. I'd shut the radio off. There's a lot of times I would get up at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'd just lay there. And it was like being in a like a hyperbolic like a chamber. chamber. Yeah. Yeah. It's just there's not a sound anywhere. I, and yeah. I would literally, like, listen for something, and there'd be nothing. I know. It is a magical, magical place, this place. To be somewhere where you don't hear human anything is so special. It's so special. And I swear one night there was something massive. This is when I was building the, the A-frame. I would do the same thing. Work all day, come back, take a shower, and be like, oh, fire, and just chill, and then go to bed. But, like, one night, I mean, something huge was coming through here. They went right up by the outhouse. It had to be a moose, like a bull moose, because yeah. it's just crashing. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, bears don't do that. No. no. Bears are quiet. It had to be a moose. It was so loud. That's the only thing I can think. Yeah, moose don't care. It was just bombing through here. The but, only thing that bothers moose in this area is wolves. Yeah. There's and wolves don't make any noise either, you know? No, there's definitely wolves around here. And you've had a bear come right up at this spot. I've seen a bear right here. Yeah. When I was sitting on the other side of the fire reading a book, one came out of the woods right over yeah, there. Yeah, and, and that was like 11 o'clock in the morning. I think the fire was pretty much gone. It was a, a just a nice bright day. I was, was reading so a book. It was so weird. It was a boring book, too. Like, and we had been visiting with your brother and sister-in-law yep. here 
I mean, for hours. It was so weird. There's definitely been a lot of bear on the trail cams. And, Everybody but I have was not gone. seen a bear here. I haven't seen a bear here in person yet. I've only seen that one. I just yelled at it, and it peeled out. You know, it was freaked right out. That's what you want. It had no idea. And it yeah. was, you know, it wasn't big. It wasn't big enough to worry about. It was oh. 100 pounds, maybe. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of, that's plenty. That's 100-pound dog a is dog. a terrifying dog, right? Yeah. But, you know, bears, they're, they, most of the, most of the time, black bears just take right off. Well, I just stood up and I was like, hey. And it just <laughs> yeah. turned around and just peeled out. Yeah, that's what you want. That did not happen at Minto with me. That bear didn't even react when I yelled at it. Yeah, that's that one not I shot at didn't either. Yeah. Yeah. It's just bizarre. Like, and that is, you don't want that. <laughs> right. don't, I don't want that. No. And that's what's nice. I don't know. It, you know, I don't obsess about being in a hard side anything. But having like the Vardo, where you've got walls, it is this whole different level of like security with that there is a difference between that and being like in our bell tent or the wall tent. You know, we've had lots of bear around us in the wall tents. Black bear, not grizz. I don't even want to deal with grizz. There's a grizz, I'm out. Yeah. For some reason, it doesn't feel the same with a black bear, but like... As soon as you start getting into something with, with walls, boy, is that, it just kind of takes. Oh, it's way better. <laughs> it just takes better. like this anxiety, this low, really low level anxiety away. That and like, you there's, know? there's never been a, there's never been a predatory black bear attack after dark documented right but people die in their tents in glacier national park every other year oh my gosh somebody's tents ripped apart and a grizzly will just Ala they'll you know they'll alaska eat it. too yeah totally yeah so like Chris. that's the thing if you're if you get woke up in the middle of the night by a bear it better be a black bear because if it's a grizz you know all oh bets my are gosh. off gosh just they're so scary that's why people general. carry guns that's why you should have a gun so I should have a gun you should have bear pepper spray pepper spray everything and just have it ready a flamethrower so do you a have katana. a katana? Do you have a gun? I carry a broadsword. I have a gun. I know you do. With us. I have it with us. I got two guns. I have the bear spray with us. I have a bazooka with us. Do you have emergency uh, communication device? Yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I don't travel with any of that junk, man. Well, I'll tell you what. That's what Mickey's getting for Christmas. Holy crap. He's... I have a spear. I come up here and I made a, I made a spear. Bear right. spear. Yeah, but it's at your cabin. Yeah, so what? You know? It's not I'll go right get here, it. and this is where you saw I'll, the bear. I'll, I'll go down and get the spear and, and spear the bear. And the bear tore apart our outhouse right there. And that prick did. One of those bears <laughs> did tear that outhouse to pieces. All joking aside, <laughs> yeah, the bear wrecked the outhouse. Well, the bear, you know, a bear tearing the door off the outhouse is like not no small thing. That's kind of crazy. I think if you tried, you might be able to tear the door off the outhouse. I don't think I could. But I don't think a bear's trying much to do it. No. I think I just think they grab it and just yank it right. Why pulled the screws straight out of the wood. Why don't I ever get stuff like that on my trail camps? You don't I have a trail them. cam in the outhouse. I, you know, there's a point. I did get lots of otters pooping. And so. that's good. I did get the bear eating the trail cam, like tasting. The, that was that was a great shot. That was a great shot. Great shot. Yeah, like you know, I'm taking credit for the bear, like, but it was a great shot. Yeah, but honestly, like you know, if you're if you're shooting video all the time, you got trail cams and stuff. That's the best you could hope for. The it's bear the comes up. Best you, you can see hope the for. ridges inside the bear's mouth as it's, it's chewing so on cool. the trail like, cam. Like I want the animals sniffing the camera. And you like, should put this in to whatever you're doing right now. Just like. Yeah. Rehash that piece. Yeah. So people can see what it looks oh, like. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. And it's like, oh, yeah. And then you come back at the end of the day and you're in your little wall tent. And I don't know. There's definitely, I definitely do feel more secure here in my A frame, in your cabin, in the Vardo. Like, not that I have felt threatened, but there is something very comforting about having walls there's no doubt about it you can carry brass knuckles too so you can punch a bear in the face yeah uh, they don't like that yeah, yeah I, seriously like 
Come on, man. Can we put poison on him, too? And light him on fire? Poison dart, dart dad? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't even think about it. There's there's bear around here. They don't bother anybody. No, I know. But, like, I haven't legit camped in the woods, deep woods alone, in a while. And you kind of wonder, like, do you lose your edge? Yeah. Can you lose your edge? I think you can. I think you can totally lose your edge. That, that would be like, oh, we're going right back to I haven't ever done this before. Like, okay. You know? Yeah, if you're camping by yourself in the woods, like completely oh, alone. Oh yeah, it's it's edgy. The, the first night is a long night. It is. The second night, you're it's better. It takes about four or five nights, it and does. then then by the fourth night, you are so into it. Yeah. And you just you go to sleep. You wake up in the middle of the night. It's quiet. Everything's cool. Yeah. You go back to sleep. You wake up. It's the sun's out. Yeah. I but, agree. But the first night, it's like <laughs> it's a, it's a it's edgy. It's an alien feeling. It is. It's edgy. It's edgy for sure. Yeah, you do four, five, six. You do a week by yourself. Oh, you're totally good. You're so good by you're that. Totally good. Yeah, you're so good. Yeah. And most people never do that. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with never doing that. Oh, but, absolutely. But you're definitely missing a part of like. It's good to understand what it's like. Yeah, it's super. It can be super exciting and like empowering. But yeah, I, I've thought that lately, like. You know, I haven't, I've been in the Vardo, I've been in, like, cabins, and, like, I haven't really gone, like, into the woods deeply lately by myself. And I was thinking the other day, like, I wonder, I wonder if I've lost my edge. I don't think I have, but, like, you can overthink a lot of things, too. You can overthink everything, but, like, here it is so quiet. So what's your opinion? Is it better to have some wind to drown it out? <laughs> or is it better? Is it better to be completely quiet where you can hear everything? That's a real question. That's a because <laughs> when you're by yourself in the middle of the bush, in absolute just bush, bush. When it's super quiet, it's almost worse. You, every time you wake up at night, you will you will ask yourself, "Why did I wake up? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What woke me up?" And you'll you'll sit there and listen for twenty minutes absolutely waiting for the next shoe to drop type of thing you know absolutely and you know that's the worst thing you can do too like and if it's breezy you don't do that because you wake up and it's like you listen and it's there's noise everywhere but up here yeah a lot of times it'll be windy in the daytime and then at night it like will it's be like this it'll be dead calm. it's like this now when courtney and i were on the yukon you know you're obviously thinking about bears and camp all the time you tried not to camp, but we had no options of where to camp. There was no, there was no beach. The water was too high. So when we got into that big storm, um, it was so loud and just violent, right? It was mm -hmm. just, and one of, like the second night we were, we were in camp because we just had to be beached for a couple days. Second night when it let up and it got quiet, Mm -hmm. You know, you're woke up by moose growling. Right. That's like the worst. Yeah, because you assume the dog knows what's the going on. The dog has sensed something, has heard something, and it's suddenly quiet enough where you can actually hear what's going on around you. Like, legit, would I think I'd rather be attacked when I didn't hear it coming, when you have time to think about it coming, and it's oh, totally, dead quiet. Totally. So then, you know... All of a sudden you're awake because the dog's growling and you're listening like what was that is there anything out there of course you're in a tent you know and all you can do is unzip and go out and look and like you don't really want to do that and then you go down the rabbit hole and you can't go back to sleep because now you're on edge so so the other question is is it better to be alone alone or to have a, a dog with you because you know Maisie Daisy she makes things a hundred times worse. A lot of like, times. She'll bark all night long at things. And, and I'm sure there are <laughs> things. But then you're like, well, is it? You know, like you're just conflicted on. Is it really a real thing or is it not? Well, our first collie, his name was Hooli. He was a lot like Macy. He's a big collie, you know, big dog. Mm -hmm. And the older he got, he couldn't hear anything. And he'd bark at stuff that didn't exist. And so he's totally no help, right? No help. You're out in the woods, he starts barking, you know, it's 
It ain't doing you no it's good. Like, she doesn't know what's going but on. But on the other hand, you think about dogs' noses and they, you know, that's such a strong sense for them. You know, they're smelling something that doesn't make sense. So even though he couldn't hear, that doesn't mean he couldn't sense and smell something that wasn't right. Although, you know, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean something is a threat necessarily. It means something he's bothered by. He could bar be barking. I don't know. The last time Mickey and I went to Minto, which Minto's 75 miles as the crow flies northwest of Fairbanks, Alaska. We go up there to fish pike. We were sitting on this island and we, we camped out there. We got up, we had breakfast, we went out fishing. Soon as we're out fishing, we look back at the island, which is a hundred yards away. And there's a great big black bear, you know, making his way down the island. You know, it's like, here's the tent, here's the black bear, the black bear's you know, picking berries, doing whatever bears do. But it was a good bear. It was a 400-pound bear, you There's know. There's always a bear there. There's a lot of bear in that country. <laughs> there's always a bear on that and island. And it's like, well, crap, we know there's a bear on the island where we're camping. We had, like, sardines. I brought, oh I brought like, gosh. all kinds oh, of stinky food, that. right? You know? Oh, I remember Mickey complaining about what you yeah, brought we Yeah, we, we just took crap for food. We had, like, spam yeah and tartar sauce and <laughs> i remember hearing about that it trip. was it was such a white trash like <laughs> fishing trip man it was spam and tartar sauce and sardines Just rednecking it up like sardines and mustard all the stuff as soon as you open the can like every bear is going to smell it for 40 miles in every direction what, right? way to go what the heck well you know there's a lot of bears there <laughs> well do you need to do that were you camping and eating in the same spot yep Oh my gosh. Okay, I didn't do that. I don't I remember if we had a gun with us or not. I kind of don't think we Probably did. Probably not. A lot of times we do out there. We'll pack we'll pack heat, you know. You were packing heat when I when you sat on the bear spray that I had that didn't have the trigger guard. Yeah, one time Brooke had, <laughs> had this bear spray in the boat. And in my boat, there's like oh, this plastic bucket so built good. into the seat. <laughs> where you just throw stuff in there and it's got a hole so it doesn't collect water you know you throw lures and tools in it and stuff oh. she had the bear spray in that like built-in bucket and i sat on the bear spray and it well, sprayed I... me on the hind quarters <laughs> and it was literally like my butt was on fire and the kids were in the boat too and they were smaller and i was i i was like i'm just gonna stay on shore for this fishing trip and it was the bear spray that I had lost a trigger guard for. So it's like, I'm not throwing it away. Like, it's still good bear spray. Yeah, it totally worked. <laughs> <laughs> I but, remember the kids were like, yeah, we were coughing and hacking, and, you know. That bear spray also got me in my truck when I had it behind the seat, and I went to move the seat back for something, and it <laughs> hit the trigger and sprayed the cab of the truck. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> just maced you. Yeah, I had to get it. It was like, you don't it's need, powerful. <laughs> you don't need to get it in your eyes for it to be effective. You just get it on your skin. It no, was enough. it's just I in was... the air. That capsaicin hits the air and you're, you're, even if yeah, you didn't get it. Yeah, but I sat on it. So like my back was, like yeah. my, my thigh was wet <laughs> was with burning. like bear spray and it burned like crazy, man. You couldn't get rid of it. And those pants had a, like a bear spray stain in the yeah, ass. Yeah, they totally did. <laughs> they totally did. Oh. Uh. Yeah, Minto. There's always a bear. And Mickey's, like, talking about going to Minto. Like, oh, my god. Oh, it's gosh. cool. I mean, if he's got the guts oh, yeah. to be out there, no, no, sure. No, 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 it's fine. But, like, go he... with a friend. But freaking bring a shotgun, bring bear spray. Like, you don't mess around there. They're going to be there. And I don't like, I did not like the way the last black bear reacted when I was there. I was there for. I didn't like the last black bear I saw there either. And, you know, that other time it just kind of <sighs> wandered by the tent, didn't really react. Remember Roy? We, had one, we had one out there, and I, I put a round over its back it from a 12-gauge, from a pump shotgun. Uh, and I fired six inches over this bear's back, and the bear just basically did a little hop, and yeah. then it went back to whatever it was doing. It didn't give a crap what I, yeah. you know, that somebody was there with a gun. It didn't mean anything to that bear. And then it wandered off into the brush. That's what they're like there. I swear that's every reaction we've had from a bear on Min at Minto. I don't like it. <laughs> I wouldn't go there alone anymore. I, I didn't wouldn't. want to shoot that bear because it wasn't a. It was a hundred and that one wasn't fifty pounds that big. maybe. It, it wasn't that big. I think the one we saw, I, 
It's in a video, by the way. It's in a video of mine called Three Women, Eleven Day... No, Three Women, Pike, Eyeballs, and a Bear. I don't remember. It's well, gonna... Who titles your video? <laughs> That's the worst title ever. Dude, that video's done pretty good. It would have done better if it would have been sensible. Well... <laughs> You know, I'm not really that sensible. Search. But here's the thing. I'll search, man. Okay, but but that, you can see what, that bear. There is a glimpse of that bear in that video. And and uh, that was an interesting trip because that bear was with us and you could feel its energy. Sandy and I both felt like we knew when it was there, and we both agreed, like, I think the bear is off the island. Now, that right? sounds like some hippie nonsense garbage, right? New age mumbo-jumbo horse crap. But honestly, that's true. Like, when there's something on the island with you, you a bear or a moose, you, you don't really... feel it. Maybe you hear it before you, your ears actually register it. Maybe it's like a subconscious thing where, like, you hear it before you actually hear it. But I totally get that. That is that's a legitimate thing. When there's a bear there, man, you're like, there is a bear on this island. You know it. Well, we did know it. And when it's gone, you know, you like, there you don't just, feel that anymore. Yeah, we were like, you know. And that might sound like some hippy dippy crap, but that's that's totally legit. Yeah, that we never did see it again after we both agreed. Like, no, I think it's gone. You know, there was another person who didn't agree with us. But we both thought it was gone. We we never saw it never again. Never saw it again. And I feel like it was definitely an energy like you could pick up on. And I know that there's that's a super attuned um, sense in animals is energy. Any animal has a, oh, yeah. a sense of energy about it that it is sensing within other animals. And we're we're an animal when you really come down to it. We just don't have those skills. And those senses tuned into that to the level that animals out here do. You know, like, remember being on alone? Like, you really, you know, being out there for that long of a time, you really, you really got to feel some of those sensations with the natural world and what was going on. I mean, you really did tune into it much more. And then you see that video clip of like a wolf running along looking at somebody who's filming them. And it runs into a tree. And you're like, <laughs> what, what am I supposed to believe? <laughs> well, there's that. There's that. <laughs> Lionel Richie was just on. Right. And she shot off Lionel Richie to film the fire. Right. We were easy like Sunday morning. Doesn't show up. You two cuties. Glows. Want that? I'm gonna try it. You good? Go back to bed.
morning. Morning, babe. Sleep good? Oh, yeah. I used to drink two cups of coffee in the morning, every morning. Maybe big cups of strong coffee. This is like five cups, you know. I'm just down to one, though. You kind of look and sound like a lumberjack this morning. Your voice is really low. You know, somebody else the other day was like, where do I get that shirt? It's Walmart. is like 12 <laughs> bucks. Every Walmart in the country's got them. I bought one in extra large tall, and I bought one in extra extra large tall. They actually had a tall at Walmart. They did. They did. They got just. They just got a pile. They're not even on a rack. They're all folded up on. Like yeah. A, I don't know what it is. One of those little display tower things. Well, this is my second cup, but you know I drink decaf, and these are really small cups, but it just tasted so good, so I got another one. Nothing like coffee in a campfire first thing. Or moose. So you as soon as you start to fire a moose, run, ditches us. Yeah, it, so. yeah. So I left moose the door open. Scared to death of fires. He doesn't like the pop. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> Just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Just hungry. Feed me. Oh. Feed me. My honey's making me hash and eggs. I'm so hungry. It's going to be awesome. The wolf smells the hash. <laughs> Boy, I'm having no luck with these freaking yolks. There you go. Oh, thank you so much. That's beautiful. Yes. Looks so good. He's just struggling with allergies and smoke so bad right now. I'll say prayer. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day and the time we can be here together to enjoy the fall colors and just to be in this quiet, quiet spot. So thankful for our anniversary coming up. And we're thankful for this food. Thank you for everything you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Dave special, eggs and hash. You ready for your bite? Here it comes. Look at that. Open up. Mmm. Nobody's getting my first bite. I already ate it. Thank you. 25 years of marriage. <laughs> Oh, man. A couple weeks will be 25 years. Yeah. I need Tabasco or salsa or... Oh. We don't mess around around here. I haven't had Tabasco in a couple, three years. COVID ruined it, so we'll see how this goes. I think it's much better now, but, man, I couldn't eat it for a long time. I eat it by the cup. Mm-hmm. It's back. Is it? That tastes good. Yeah. Of all the things, too, I don't remember having a big taste bud shift in anything else besides Tabasco. Like I couldn't, I couldn't use it. It Tabasco. was disgusting. <clears throat> Onions, peppers. Onions and peppers are fine for me. They never had that. Hmm. But I've always loved Tabasco sauce. And it was ruined. It was awful. I yeah. couldn't get it near it. Yeah, it was really bad. Yeah, I'm, I pretty much switched over to Frank's hot sauce. Man, I just was so hungry. All I could think about this morning being hungry is being on alone. And you have that hunger that you're never going to satisfy. Like I knew I'd get food today. But there, you just had to deal with that hungry feeling. It was rough. No food is rough.
That's really tough stuff. Oh yeah. Get him out of there, boy. Get him. Dig him out of there, Moose. Get him. Get him, boy. Dig him out. Dig him out. Dig him out. <laughs> Did you get him? <laughs> you know, he'd be an amazing rat dog. Oh, he'd love it. He'd be so into it. <laughs> what a goober. Now I think he's just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> Smells so good. Turtle eggs, probably. Yeah, you can see the shells. Oh, yep. It's Turtle Central, I'm sure. Imagine if you're out here at the right time of year, you come out here at night come along some of these banks where it's, you know, you get a little bit of sand, but you find turtles everywhere. I'll bet. Moose man, come on. Let's go get to the oh, lake. Man. Didn't get him. Too far in, your head's too big. Wow, buddy, you're tough. <laughs> Fall is just a blessing for the senses. Just amazing. These big reds and whites are just my favorite trees of all time. Oh, it is too. Such a beautiful spot. Oh, he's like, yes. Good job, boy, Luther. Bushy's getting Luther. in. Can't get near water like this and not get in it. Yeah. What do you think, buddy? It's really shallow for a long ways, too. It's perfect for short boys. That's a good dog. Oh, get in it, Oh, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> there's clams. Yeah, there's always clams here. So I don't know if you remember or not, this is the place where I brought down a canoe. This is about a mile hike in from our property. And uh, let's go see if the canoe stashed has made it. I mean, I stashed it pretty good. Okay. I think I see it. Found it! Yeah, nobody's found it. It's still here. <laughs> it's right behind me. Okay. Oh yeah, she looks perfect. <sighs> All right, let me get to the back and I'll push it right out to you. All right, Mooty, let's go. Let's go back and get our stuff. Come on. Good mountain dog. 
Okay, instant boat. Look at that. The water is super nice. Yeah, I'm taking my shoes off. Super, super nice. You guys like my you guys like my guinea pig socks? <laughs> Yeah, this is amazing. Come on, buddy. Come on, Moose Man. We gotta get way out to launch here, Moose Man. Because the water's only like six inches deep. Wow. Feels so good on your feet. Doesn't it? Yeah. Moose too. That nice you better get him in or he's gonna be too deep. I think he wants in. You wanna get in there, buddy? Get up in there. All right. I'm trying to find the uh, the entrance to the other lake, in the middle of nowhere lake, connected to another middle of nowhere lake. We can't find it yet. As soon as we do, we're gonna drop line, try some pike fishing. If we don't find that channel on the other side of this point, you want to just drift our way back to where we started, drift fish. Yeah, because. I don't know if this is it up here or not. We'll see. All right, we did a few casts. Daddy's got one on. How's it feel? It feels like a good fish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. Oh wow, it is too. No moose. Oh, he's Damn. a hog. Wow. Whoa. Oh my gosh, you, you're freaking kidding me. That's a good fish. Oh my word. Oh, dude, moose, moose. Come here, boy. Moose, come, on. come, come. Here, why don't you take this? Holy crap. You gotta sit down, too. Okay. Whatever's going on, it ain't the right thing to do. Come here, buddy. Come on. What the heck? Okay. Hold on. Oh, you okay. dummy. All right, got the biggest hog on. Okay. Oh. All right. This is me. Moose. Why does every dog we have jump out of the boats? All right, hold on. I'm getting back to my seat. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Hi, Moosey boy. Come here, buddy. Moosey, come. Go down. Go on. Get down there. Come here. Good boy. Come here. Come on. That's a good boy. Come. Come on. See what that got you out there? Just just stop. Just stop. I Moose can't. Is, Moose is fine. All right. You get too far on this end and we go over. What are we going to do with that <laughs> We're just going to get back in your seat, Bobby. <laughs> <sighs> now you got that dog in front of you who is going to try to get the fish. Moosey, come. Come on, buddy. My pliers would be nice. My pliers? Just, just throw it in. Hey. Dude, that fish is a hog. Good fish. Oh, I haven't seen a fish that big in a long time. All right. Come on. Come on, get going. Go oh, scooching down that way. Come on. Good oh, boy. Come on. That's a good boy. Keep him scooching. Come on, get down there. Come on. That's a good boy. Now, got a hold of you because you're a bonehead. Holy cow, I want to see this fish. It's just. I wish we mm, had an anchor, that's for sure. Massive. Everybody's got to stay pretty still. Everybody's got to stay still. Because he's so, so big. I mean. Goodness, it's a pig. What do you think that is? 30, 36? He's up there. Oh, he's, he's pulling got, the boat. Still got lots of fight in him, too. Man. All right. There we go. Oh my gosh. I'm right in the wrong light, ain't I? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's incredible. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now I can turn him loose. Oh, the hands smell like pike. Oh, that's a good Love smell. 
Wow. Oh, it I shouldn't love... be too difficult to get off here. No, it feels, he didn't swallow it. That's good. No, he's, he's got one hook in him. It's right on the outside. Here we go. Oh, I'm ready to catch one. Oh my gosh, good job. <laughs> it's a nice fish. Yeah. Cow. What a knob. <laughs> That dude is ready to be back on shore. He, he was sitting in the puddle of water, shivering. <laughs> he got that coming. He did. Looky, look. Go, 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 <laughs> go. He's so happy to be back on shore. <laughs> yeah, he's like, here's the trail, guys. So, like, honey. Let's, let's go. How was your fishing experience with moose? It was uh, it was exciting. So the whole time I'm thinking we're, we're gonna we're gonna flip this thing and sink because we're 150 yards from shore, but but we're also in like two and a half feet of water. But sinking a boat is sinking a boat, man. Yeah. You can't be okay with it. <laughs> hey, turkey. Oh, he's just full of it, man. All right, I'll meet you over there. All right. Talk about a whole bunch of trouble in a little package. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, it's you, all right. Good to pick the better lake to do it on, though. <laughs> all right. It still is over this guy's head. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, hope you liked the video. See you in the next one. Scroll in the woods. She gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy. Oh.